So by 350 words, what do they tell us about the character? Well, they tell us an awful lot about David's way of thinking, how he wanted to understand the world, they particular world, his, his recent history. So a lot of the work in the collection are modern British painting and sculpture. And of course, you know, he he's, was a baby boomer, he's post-war baby boomer. A lot of the art um, was made around that period or the period building up to that moment. So David used the collection to understand his place in the world. It is largely a mid-20th century take on British life of city living, landscapes and coastal scenes all of which might seem quite conservative for a man with a reputation as an avant-garde performer. He acquired much of it in the mid-90s with the help of this art advisor. What was he like to work with? He was the most remarkable man to work with. Um, and he was deeply invested in what he was doing. His focus was exhausting and, and uh, all-encompassing. And when he was on the subject, on the subject of buying non social pictures, he was incredibly intense. Um, and I think you see the intensity with some of the selections in the collection. Okay, but which one of those on sale was his favourite? He very famously talked about the hourglass, and that's something that he lived with. And David talked about how this work could change the way he felt in the morning if he passed it. If he was feeling joyous that morning, he said, Oh yes, I don't want it to sound like that painting looks. Several of these poppy postmodern pieces from Bowie's collection are priced in the low hundreds of pounds. Tantalizing for some, maybe. But then that's the auction estimate before the bidding starts. Will Roberts, please leave. Well, there'll be a, a little more on the US elections just coming up on Newsnight. Uh, here's Evan. Whether it is Trump or Clinton that wins next week, they will be president of a country that is divided and sometimes angry. We'll be hearing how hard it will be for either to put the United back into the United States. Join me now on BBC Two for 11 p.m. in Scotland. That's Newsnight with Evan here on BBC One. It's time for the news where you are. Have a good night. Welcome to Wales Today, our top stories. It will cost £350 million, first proposed 12 years ago. Finally, this new super hospital is given the go-ahead. And teachers' pay could be set by politicians in Cardiff rather than Westminster tonight. Anger from teaching unions. Hello, good evening. It was first proposed over a decade ago, and after years of delays, a new 300 million pounds hospital for South East Wales has finally been given the go-ahead. The specialist and critical care centre is expected to open in 2022 as part of a plan to modernise health services run by the Anira Bevan Health Board. Paul Heaney has the story. The best sort of medicine at a health centre in Cumbran, where they try to keep people out of hospital. But sometimes only specialist treatment will do. In this part of Wales, that means ageing facilities. Neville Hall in Abercrombie or the Royal Gwent in Newport. Time for a change. A new specialist and critical care centre to be built near Cumbra. Treatment for heart attacks, neonatal and children's services will all move here from Newport and Abercrombie. You want the right care in the right place and at the right time. And that sometimes means you need specialist centres for a real Long. excellent in quality of care rather than trying to do too many things in too many places. The new hospital will only cater for very seriously ill patients. 460 beds makes it roughly the same size as a study Gwynedd in North Wales. Plans were first put forward in 2004 for a £300 million project. But six years later, the plans were no further forward, and the then Health Minister Edwina Hart asked for more details on the plans. There was uncertainty for years, seemingly little progress. Then in 2013, the new man in charge, Mark Drakeford, launched a review of all South Wales hospitals. More delay. But later that year, the business case for the Cumbran site was finally accepted. Two years later, the Health Board submitted its final plans, demolition of old buildings on the site, but still no final confirmed start date for development. Costs up by £50 million over a decade, plus all those delays.
data, whether we model you will, will have uh, an impact for a generation to come. So, so the ways so, are justified. So it, to, to get the right decision, it's absolutely right. It has been difficult. We, we have been trying to maintain services as best we could over, over the last couple of years. What this now provides us with is a clear focus as to where we're going. A landscape ready to be transformed into the newest hospital in Wales. The British Medical Association says many of its doctors though are still concerned about the lack of detail in these plans and what the new facility could mean for other services when doors here finally open later than planned in 2022. Paul Healy reporting. Cardiff Crown Court has heard how a son killed his mother with a chainsaw while she was hanging out the washing. Robert Owens attacked 75-year-old Iris Owens after a row at the family home in Estramunic near Caffili in May. Owens, who's 47, has pleaded guilty to murder and will be sentenced tomorrow. Decisions over the pay and conditions of Wales' 20,000 teachers will be devolved from Westminster to Cardiff Bay. The Welsh Government described the move as encouraging. The two major teaching unions have told BBC Wales they're opposed to the idea, fearing lower pay than in England. There's a lot of concern about it might lead to depressed wages here. A lot of concern about the fact that there's teacher shortage in England and if teachers in England are being paid and bought to the same job, then we could have a brain drain of our best teachers who want to go across the border and actually get paid the, the going rate for, the, for that uh, work. A judge is calling for more investment and new court services in Wales to break the cycle of families who have multiple children taken into care. A BBC Wales investigation has found that in one case, a mother had 11 children removed. Judge Nick Crichton says the current system is failing. In the first of two special investigations, India Pollock reports. Katrina Houston works in Carmarthenshire with mums who are at risk of having or have had their children taken into care. Our doctors, though, have been looked after children themselves, sort of averaging around about 60% of them. A similar amount have been sexually abused in childhood. They grew up with low self-esteem, they turned to, well, alcohol is their favourite drug. As a means of blocking out the pain, they get into relationships with domestic violence, they're focused on surviving and not in, on the care of the children, so they're often done for neglect. Children are taken into care if they are suffering or at risk of significant harm. There are more than 5,500 looked after children, and the number of court orders brought by councils to remove children from their families has increased by 31% compared with last year. Today, Katrina is visiting Alison. She was in an abusive relationship with a drug taker. She had four children, who were between the ages of seven and two, removed by social services because of their chaotic home life. When a social worker turned up to take them, I was devastated. One of my children left the house and I had to go and get him because he'd run away and he was begging, like, can I just spend nine more days with mummy? Can I spend ten more days? I want to stay here living with mummy and things like that. They were all just a mess, really. We all were. 16 of the 22 councils in Wales told us the largest number of children they've taken from one mum. Blyna Gwent had the largest number, with 11 children removed. In Newport and Rhondda, it was nine. In Gwynedd, it was eight. If we had an earthquake in Wales, the government would immediately come up with millions of pounds, let's say 20 million pounds, to help the survivors and the people who suffer as a result of an earthquake. The figures on the increase in the number of care procedures over the last 10 years and over the last 12 months are an earthquake around the corner. The Welsh Government says it's developing a national approach to help reduce numbers of children going into care and that it has a specialist service that helps parents at an early stage. Alison has now turned her life around and is hoping to get her children back home. She hopes other mums like her can get more support before it's too late. Club is where the bad people are. Tonight's sport and Gareth Bale says it's a dream come true to have signed a new deal with Real Madrid. Reportedly worth more than £100 million pounds over the next six years. The Welsh forward has won five trophies since his world record move to Spain three years ago, but today he admitted he's had a difficult journey at the club. Obviously, I had um, some great years here. Obviously, I had one season where 
it maybe wasn't the best, but I think this was the best season for me. This made me grow up as a player, as a person, and, and I think give me more confidence to be able to deal with whatever whatever's thrown at me. And uh, in tonight's matches, Swansea lost 3-1 away to Stoke in the Premier League. Uh, Wayne Radledge was this girl in the first half, but cruelly two of Stokes were from the boots of former Swansea player Wilfred Bone. The Swans remain one place off the bottom of the league. Let's see what the weather has in store. There is a nice forecast. Thanks very much, Jamie. Well, there is a change to colder weather on the way, but at the moment it roll, yeah. it's dry and mild for Halloween with a few spooky mist and the fog patches. Those fog patches could be hey. dense in places. Some Most some of the country some. dry tonight, but we could see a few mm. spots of drizzle in the far north by the end of the night. And where the sky does remain clear, it will turn a bit chilly, dropping as low as 6 Celsius Manga. in mid Wales. So a gloomy start for some of us tomorrow morning. Mist and fog will slowly lift. Little sunshine in parts of the south and west, cloudy in the north, with a few spots of light rain and drizzle. Across the rest of the UK, watch out for fog patches in the south if you're travelling. A cold front will bring a few spots of light rain, drifting southwards during the day. Further north, brightening up nicely, sunshine in Newcastle, a few showers in the north of Scotland. 16 in Plymouth tomorrow afternoon, so still very mild, but colder air coming down from the north, only 9 in Glasgow. Now in Wales tomorrow afternoon, cloudy in the south, the odd spot of drizzle, otherwise dry, brightening up in the north with some sunshine. Temperatures lower than today with a north to northeasterly breeze. Tomorrow evening, cloud in the south will clear. Most places dry overnight by a few 